Okay. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about Medicaid expansion in Nebraska. We've got some big key events coming up here in the next couple months. And a few changes that I think are noteworthy for a lot of folks to know. Um, feel free to comment where you're at, where you're watching from. Um, any questions as we go along today or any thoughts on the topic? Um, I'll try to answer any questions you have as we go along, um, so long as I can see them easily uh, and know the answer. I also have my colleague Teresa is going to be watching the comment section. If there's anything quick and easy, she'll probably be able to answer that, and she'll be posting a few different links as we go along. Um, she have a few documents and websites that'll be relevant for for any viewers to see. Um, my name is Trenton Burr. I'm a policy assistant here. I work primarily in Nebraska policy and uh, Medicaid expansion is one of those policies and something that we've been working on for a number of years. Um, before we dig into some of the more recent changes and new things you might want to know about, I figured it may be appropriate to kind of reflect a little bit about how expansion has gone in Nebraska over time and kind of refresh ourselves on what has all happened. Um, this has been kind of a lull over the last few months as we've been anticipating the recent enrollment and implementation periods that's coming up this fall. Um, so this is kind of the culmination of really, just really a few years of work for the center and for advocates and partners around the whole state. So it's fun to see where we're getting. Um, glad we're making some, some real progress and, and actually starting to get care to people here in the next couple months. Um, so the real impetus for the conversation today was because uh, enrollment for Medicaid expansion begins August 1st, which is this coming Saturday. Um, so before I dig into those things, let's look back a little bit on what Medicaid expansion is in Nebraska and in general. Um, I should also mention if I'm, if I'm being too quiet or if you can't hear me very well or something, just leave a comment and I'll, I'll get that straightened out. But anyways, so what exactly is Medicaid expansion? Um, so it's worth thinking about it first in terms of Medicaid itself. So Medicaid, which is going to be 55 years old um, here in two days, actually, um, their anniversary is coming up, is just a program to provide health care free of charge to low-income Americans, essentially. It's been in place for a long time, and for most of its existence, um, it's covered up to 100% of the federal poverty level. Um, Medicaid expansion was part of a larger effort of the Affordable Care Act from 2010. So the Affordable Care Act had two huge provisions in it. You know, it was a sweeping health care law, but first thing, it had the health care marketplace subsidies. And so this was for anyone making from 100 to 400 percent of the federal poverty level. Um, and so it would have tapering off subsidization for, so that those folks could access health care. Um, on the private marketplace a little easier. It also tried to expand Medicaid. Um, so before it went to 100% of the federal poverty level and after the ACA, they wanted to extend it to 138% of the federal poverty level effectively. Um, so there was a court case that went through in 2012 um, to the Supreme Court and they decided that no states were actually obligated to provide Medicaid up to 138% of the federal poverty level but they could opt into doing so. Um, some states chose to do it right away. Other ones continue to do so. Nebraska did not choose to pursue this immediately. And so what this created in these states without expanded Medicaid was effectively kind of a coverage gap. So from 100 to 138% of the poverty level, these folks were intended to get Medicaid, but didn't. And they really effectively can't afford health care, even with some sort of subsidies that they get. Um, from the Affordable Care Act. So they created this huge pot of people, millions of people around the whole country and tens of thousands in Nebraska who were sitting there without access to health care when people above them were getting subsidized and people below them were getting subsidized. So if we jump to Nebraska, um, we really kicked it off in 2018 um, and we decided to go through a ballot initiative. Um, some states did just by legislative, uh, you know, making a law and passing it through the legislature, but Nebraska decided to do a ballot initiative. And so in 2018, we were part of a number of groups who were going around, collected signatures and got initiative 427 on the ballot that fall. And it passed in Nebraska with 
53% of the state's vote. And so all it would do was expand Medicaid to 138% of the federal poverty level, and it just directed the state to do so. Um, some of the impetus for that was, you know, also that the federal government pays 90% of that cost, and Nebraska is obligated to pay 10%. You know, and this is, there, there are many financial benefits to clinics, hospitals who before would have to provide care to these folks um, and would, would not get reimbursed for any of it because they weren't covered by Medicaid or any sort of insurance. Um, but then, you know, with Medicaid, they would have insurance coverage and could reimburse those facilities. And that was really important to us, um, you know, seeing our rural clinics and hospitals and healthcare infrastructure, it's important that they get the funds they need to provide the service because it's expensive to do so. And if they go and reimbursed, that can cause, you know, it's a big red hole really in, in their financials. And so it's important to to get that coverage, but also for individuals, I mean, healthcare is essential. It's really hard to go about your daily life without healthcare, you know, living in fear of any sort of accident isn't fun. And so it, we thought it, it was quite important. So we, we really worked hard to push and get 400 it's 427 passed, and it did. Um, and so there were estimated to be about 90,000-ish Nebraskans who are eligible for Medicaid expansion, and that continues to be roughly true. Um, it might be a little more now because of the recent pandemic, you know, people getting furloughed and laid off. It's really hard to determine exactly what that number is now, but, but we'll put it at right around 90,000 Nebraskans who are eligible for Medicaid expansion. Um, but the ballot initiative didn't direct exactly how we would go about implementing Medicaid expansion here. Um, it basically just told the state to do so. And so the governor um, basically took this prerogative and created a plan to do so through the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, so the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is the federal regulatory institution requires that each state submit a plan about how they're going to administer their expanded Medicaid. And so the governor had to set out and do this. And they created a program called Heritage Health Adults. And so they released this last year. And it's quite different from other states' Medicaid. Some states would just expand traditional Medicaid with all the benefits to a higher income level. And that's really it. Other states would do more complicated mechanisms. And this is what DHHS decided to do. Um, their plan really split it into two tiers. Um, so you have prime benefits and basic benefits. So no other state has done anything like this before. Um, the only real difference between the two in terms of actual benefits is dental, vision, and over-the-counter prescriptions. Those three things are only available in the prime benefits package. The basic benefits package will get you everything else. How you determine whether or not you're going to be in one or the other um, is whether or not you meet certain requirements. So you'll need to do things like declare a primary physician, go to an annual health appointment, don't miss more than so many appointments that you've scheduled, for example. Um, there are also some community engagement requirements is what they called them. And so this could include things like volunteering, care, caring for a family member, or working so many hours per month, for example. Um, so if you completed all those activities, then you could move on to the prime benefits package. Um, we have a fact sheet that detailed a little bit more about the process of this. Um, and I think Teresa will post it here, but there's a big long process that needs to go through in order for a state to start this plan. Um, so they had to go through, you know, they had to submit this plan to the federal government and had to go through hearings. And so, we had kind of fought against that for some time because it's it's kind of costly to administer that and, and uh, you know, more costly than it would be to just provide the care or the, the insurance for those things. Um, but nonetheless, that is what the, the state has decided to do and go forward with. And so we're expecting that to start eventually. Um, but the coronavirus kind of messed that up a little bit. And I'll talk about that here in a second. But um, before I move on, I wanted to you know, reiterate that it's not that you will lose all your benefits if you don't meet those requirements. You will just simply move down into the basic benefits package and you'll lose that dental vision and over the counter. So it's really important to note that. Um, if you want to learn you know, a lot more about why expansion matters you know, to individuals and to the state and to clinics and hospitals, um, we have another fact sheet that'll detail that a little bit more. Um, you know, that's really was our call to action was all these key things. So, you know, take a look at that and it will show you really how important that is to the state. 
Um, so finally, what has changed in how does the coronavirus impact this? So the Center for Medicaid, Medicare and Medicaid Services, again, this federal agency that oversees Medicaid, um, they have to approve all these changes to the program as it goes on. And so when the coronavirus arrived in March, a lot of states were making changes to their Medicaid and Medicare programs to adjust this, to adjust to it. Um, they were changing income thresholds and reimbursement rates, et cetera. And so CMS was kind of backlogged with all these new um, waivers and approvals that they needed to get through from the situation. So they essentially said that we're not going to get to Nebraska's plan right now. And that's still the case. And we're, we're probably gonna be in that same situation um, going into next spring. And so the state basically had to decide what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna go forward without anything different? Are we just gonna delay it? Um, and they decided that they're gonna continue with the October 1st date of implementation and beginning enrollment on August 1st. But instead of providing that tiered system they're only going to provide basic benefits for pretty much everyone. Um, only those who are 18 and 19 years old, pregnant or medically frail will be able to access those prime benefits. Um, so it's only gonna be those basic benefits and there aren't any other requirements needed at the moment that I had listed earlier. Um, so this is kind of a problem. Um, we don't know exactly when it's gonna start. Um, and a lot of those people aren't gonna be able to access that other kinds of care for uh, the unforeseeable future, which is problematic. Um, at least they're still, you know, going forward with it and giving most of those those benefits soon. So we're happy to see that. Um, but it's definitely a big change that people need to be aware of. Um, and finally, the big thing about this weekend is enrollment is starting this Saturday. So this is a this is a huge milestone. Um, this is really what we've been working towards. Um, this Saturday, August first, uh, enrollment begins. And so in order to enroll in Medicaid, you need to do it through the Department of Health and Human Services. And so you can do it online. Um, they've got a portal at accessnebraska.ne.gov. Um, I think Teresa should post a link to that here in a moment. I mean, it's basically just an online um, platform. You'll have to create a profile and log in and submit various information, things like your income, the number of dependents, your assets, so they can verify that and make sure that you qualify. Um, and then you'll get you enrolled in the next two months um, and then October 1st is when actual coverage will begin. Um, so you can also apply in person if you'd like. Um, DHHS has offices throughout the state. Um, a lot of county seats and larger cities will have them. Um, and we have a link to their website that'll show you where exactly you can find those offices if you're more comfortable with that. Um, they also have a phone line you can call. Um, it's 855 Six three two seven six three three. We'll try and get that in the comments too. Um, if you have any questions about it, if you want to know more details about whether or not you qualify, um, you're welcome to check out there. Um, but it's really just going to be like any any other typical application. You're just going to need to provide information, and uh, they'll get you enrolled as soon as they can. Um, and you'll get coverage here starting in October. So this is a great moment um, to see this move forward. Um, we'll be talking about this for, for a few months and we're happy to help anyone who has questions about it, wants to know more clarity about whether or not they apply. Um, you know, again, it's mostly gonna be folks who are within 100 to 138% of the federal poverty level. For individuals, this is around $17,000 per year. And for families of four, this is somewhere around $30,000 per year. Um, so it varies a little bit depending on your number of dependents, um, how many assets you have, uh, et cetera. So again, it's probably just best to, to get in contact with DHHS, um, have a conversation and they'll let you know because um, you very well, very well may qualify and you may not know it. So if you need coverage, um, it's good to get in touch with them. You can visit our website at CFRA.org. And again, we'll be posting things throughout this for the next few months and you can check out our information there if you need to refresh. Um, we'll have a Medicaid expansion landing page kind of updated shortly to reflect a lot of this. Um, and you're welcome to, to share any of it with any friends or family you know. I'm, I'm sure a lot of us know folks out there who, who need healthcare coverage or having a hard time. So we want to get them covered. You know, our real goal here is to, to get as many people with healthcare coverage as we can. So, so let's make sure we do that. So that's all I got today. Um, surf through the comments if you want to find any of those, those good links. And uh, appreciate you joining me. And uh, let's get as many people covered as we can. Thanks.